Good evening, Conroe ISD family. My name is Curtis Knoll, Superintendent of Conroe ISD. Thank you for joining us tonight for our fourth Facebook Live update. This is our March 31st, March 31st, 6 p.m. update. Thank you once again. Um, let me start by just sharing some of our uh, county data as I did to start off update three last week. We now have 93 positive COVID-19 cases in our county. Um, and we've seen some children and students now uh, testing positive. And I know that that becomes a little disconcerting to us when we see that. Um, but we're also getting updates from the public health department about people that are recovering. And so that's great news. And so when you see that list daily, hopefully that you, you not only pay attention to the number of new cases, but also to the number of cases um, that are being uh, into recovery each and every day. Now, um, it has not been my intention to schedule Facebook Lives necessarily on days that have big breaking news, um, but it has seemed to be the case over these last few weeks. Um, the challenge when we have these events on days where we have breaking news is that uh, we haven't had time as a school district yet to necessarily work through all the questions that may come up based on news that is out there. But uh, the big breaking news that I'm speaking of today, I'm sure you have seen by now, uh, that today Governor Abbott uh, issued uh, an executive order that closed all public schools in the state of Texas through um, the end of April, which would mean that our first potential day back to school would be May 4th. Um, I think we all anticipated that we would be extending our closure. That was not new news to us. Uh, we were all hopeful that we would return back on April 13th as we had originally scheduled, um, but there was a a reality that we could see unfolding before us that we would extend our um, closure. We had had conversations uh, internally and with other school districts in our area. Um, we, we had really already made that decision that May 4th would likely be our target date. And then today our governor came forth and, and made that proclamation. I do want to commend the governor. That's a hard decision to make. Um, when you look at how many people live in this state to, to give that executive order, and I can speak just on the school side, uh, I know how much I agonize over closing schools. Uh, and we have 65,000 students in Conroe ISD. When the governor has to make that decision, he's making that decision for five and a half million students. Um, so I know that he's had great counsel. There are a lot of smart people in this state and in our county that are working really hard to give the best and sound advice. And I know that's the advice that he takes uh, and made the best decision that he could um, based on the information that he had. So we, we do appreciate his leadership. But what does that mean for us here in Conroe ISD? Well, we have come out today and, and stated that we will follow his directive um, and place the same target return to school date as May 4th that he mentioned uh, in his press conference today. Um, it, why would we choose May 4th? Why wouldn't we just cancel school? I've heard that mentioned many times. Uh, and, and I will tell you, there, there's one big reason for me, uh, and it's hope. OK, there, uh, I think for all of us in our community, we we have this desire to get back to what we believe is normal, um, to, to what feels right to us. And um, not only just for us as educators, but for us as a community, um, having school is normal. Having school is 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 um, what feels natural to us. We believe in school days in Conroe ISD. We know their value. We know the importance of that. And so if we get an opportunity here at the end of the year, even if it's for only three weeks, to get back to some semblance of normal before we go to the summer, we would like to do that. And I will tell you, we won't do that if it's not safe to do so. So um, can I tell you for sure that we will return to school May 4th? Absolutely not. I can't tell you that today. Uh, you know, the governor will make a potential future decision about that. And, and if he needs to, to extend the closure, he'll do that. But it, even if he doesn't extend the closure, uh, and he says that it's okay for schools to return back on May 4th, that does not necessarily mean that we will return on that date. Uh, we will then have conversations on the local level, talking to our county leaders and our county health departments to decide if that's the smart thing to do here in Montgomery County. And if it's not, we won't do it. Um, if we have that ability to do so, we will. But if not, we won't. Now, some of you may say, well, if, if we do open and I don't feel comfortable sending my kids, how will that work? We will work all that out. You, you would not be forced to send your kids, but that's 
now at least a month away. And so uh, we don't necessarily want to focus on that today because it, it's so far in our future and, and it's a lot of what ifs. And, and we really just want to focus on our current situation and where we are today. Um, this is a tough time for many in our community. Um, we have some families out there that are really hurting because they have family members that are sick. Uh, and, and that causes pain, but we also have family members that are uh, struggling because of loss of loss of jobs or, or you're in facing tough economic times, and, and we all understand that this is hard. Um, I want to I want to encourage you all, and and that's why that May Fourth date is important to me because because of that word hope. Uh, I think we all need to have hope and and know that we're going to get through this. It's going to be better. We are going to get back to what we do, um, but it's not necessarily going to be easy. And and we see that in our community today. Um, we do see people struggling, but we also see people doing great things to help those in need. And so um, keep plugging away every day. I want to talk a little bit uh, here in a few minutes about uh, some mental health reminders and things that we can do to help us you know, work through these struggles. But um, take care of each other. Keep pushing through and, and know that tomorrow is another day and brighter days are ahead. We, we believe that uh, and, and we know that to be true. So let's talk a little bit more directly about school and what does this mean now that we're closed through May 4th? And I know uh, many of you out there are seniors or your parents of seniors and, and um, those are really tough times. And this is hard for you because this is not how you planned your senior year to go. Uh, this closure through May 4th does cancel uh, all of our proms. So we will not have proms this year. Um, we're, we're sorry that that's happened. Um, certainly we wouldn't wish it to be this way, but it, but it is. But it has not yet canceled graduations. So we are um, standing firm in our belief that we want to celebrate our seniors at the end of this school year in whatever way it is safe to do so. So what will that look like? We're not sure yet. Um, as we talked about last week, We've been in conversation with the pavilion. We've been in conversation with Sam Houston uh, about securing and, and maintaining our current dates. But we've also been working with the pavilion on securing dates later into the summer uh, with that possibility that we may not be able to have our graduations on the days are scheduled in May, but we could have them later in the summer. We would do that. Now, just to, to kind of help you out, parents, to know our first choice is to stick to the day that we have. If there's any possible way to have a graduation ceremony on the days that we currently have scheduled, we will stick to those dates. Um, now, we may have limitations on who can be in attendance. It may be uh, just the graduates in attendance and we live stream it. Wh whatever the requirements of the county may have on us or the venue may have on us, uh, we would try to work through those. But if we can have them on the, those dates, we will stick to the dates. If not, then we'll have to push back in the summer and we'll try to make that work, knowing full well that some students will already be off into the military. Some students will already be um, well on their way um, into their college life. Um, but all we can do is the best we can do. And if there is any way to have a graduation, we want to do that. Um, if we are forced to, to go into some virtual type graduation, we'll consider that as well. But if there's any way to have um, a more traditional ceremony, we want to make that happen for our seniors. Uh, this also brings up questions about grades. Now here we are, we're extending out another month. Um, how is this online learning going to work with grades and how am I going to get my credits if I'm a secondary student? Uh, how will all this work? Um, now that we have this direction, and once again, we just received it today as well. We don't, we don't get any advance notice from the governor. So this is new information for us. We will be working on grading guidelines that will get sent out to all parents and employees over these next few days. Um, but the point I want to make to you tonight, parents and students, if you're watching is we're not going to allow this situation to hurt any students. So, uh, no students is going to see a negative impact, uh, on their GPA. Or, or on their grades because of this COVID-19 situation and our school closure. Um, there's a lot of opportunity here for learning, a lot of opportunity to improve your grades and improve your status uh, over these next few weeks and this next couple of months. Um, but we're making this pledge to that this will not be uh, a negative um, uh, impact on your GPA or your grades. Now, let's talk a little more about that online learning because um, the first thing that hit me today when we when we got the um, 
notice of the closure and the length of the closure was, wow, it's a month. And if I'm a parent sitting at home, I'm thinking that that's a lot to swallow. Um, our teachers are doing great, I believe, with the online education. We're, we're now well into it, you know, a week and a half, two weeks in. I think we are hitting a little bit of a groove, but we're also noticing there are spots where um, maybe we're asking a little too much. Uh, maybe we need, to, we need to change the way we communicate. So we're going to continue to make those adjustments along the way on our end. Um, parents, what I would ask for you on your end is keep doing what you're doing uh, and just keep doing the best that you can. What we're asking you to do is not only hard, uh, it's borderline impossible. Okay, we're, we're asking you to run your household. We're asking you to go to work. We're asking you to do all those things, um, take care of your kids for their well-being, and then come home and also try to make sure that they did all their, their work. And, and if they're little ones that you have to help, um, you know, spend hours and hours helping them. We know that, that that's almost an impossible task. So once again, I just I implore you to believe me when I say this to you. You're doing great. You're doing all you can. We'll, we'll never ask for any more than that. Um, now, the good news is you're you're kind of the principal of your homeschool uh, in this situation. And so I'm going to encourage you, parents, uh, as you're working through and you see the environment in your house, there might be days that you need to make that decision that today is not a school day. Uh, today is a vacation day in, in our homeschooling situation, or today is a field trip day. And, and we're going to go have a field trip to the backyard and do activities today as a family. Whatever decision you need to make to, to not only maintain your own mental health, but the, the sanity in your house and your children's positive attitudes. Um, we have a month here. We're going to settle into uh, a little bit of a rhythm and you need to drive that in your house and know that we're going to be here to support you in the decisions that you make. Um, the school district this month I want to, will be on what is called essential operations. So what does that mean for you as a community? Uh, it will change the way we interact with you a little bit. Last week, we were on what's called limited operations. That meant that we had staff on campus every day, um, kind of working half time on campus and half time remotely. This week, we moved into essential operations. That means our campuses are completely closed. And for most of the day, if not all of the day, there is no one on campus. Now that doesn't mean we can't continue to serve you and we're not continuing to work. We're just doing it remotely. So what you may experience now and over these coming weeks, we will maintain our essential operation status, meaning no one will be on the campus. So you may experience no one answering the phone when you call, but I can assure you that if you leave a voicemail, someone will return your call very quickly because all of our employees are working. They're just working remotely. They will check your voicemails very quickly. They'll get them routed to the right people and we'll give you a call as quickly as we can. Uh, if you try to go to the school, the schools will be locked. There will be no one there. Any, anything that you may need, you're going to need to make an appointment uh, or leave a voicemail, send an email. Someone will get back with you uh, when we're in essential operations mode. That will be our mode, um, like I said, for the coming for the coming weeks. When you see these stay at home orders uh, that are issued, educational services are one of the things that are exempt. So that does still allow us to do our feeding programs um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays that we've been doing. It also allows our teachers to uh, make sure that they have the packets at the schools for you to pick up that may need to be picked up. Uh, it allows our maintenance crews to keep our buildings operational, to make sure we don't have problems with, within our buildings, and, and our great child nutrition workers to come and, and fix those lunches um, and prepare, prepare them for you so that they can be picked up on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, moving ahead, let, let's talk about that mental health piece because um, we are reaching a point and where it can feel like a lot. Um, especially when you get this news and, and you can think, man, it's, just, it's March and we're already talking about May. Where did April go? Um, if you allow that to overwhelm you, it can. Um, but I encourage you not to allow that to happen to you. And, and what, what tools you have and what works for you, um, find those and embrace those. I'm going to share with you a little bit about the things that I do um, that help me 
to to not get too overwhelmed in these type of situations. And, and I'm not a medical expert in this, and, and I wish that Miss Apollo was here with me tonight because um, she could tell me if these were right or wrong. I, I did actually clear them with her to make sure I wasn't going to give any bad advice. But I'm just sharing with you what I do. Um, every day I look for something to be thankful for. I like to start my day with with, with things to be thankful for. Um, you know, and I and I always look for good news. There's a lot of bad news that comes pouring in. Um, I try to find and focus on opportunities to seek out good news uh, and seek out things that I'm thankful for and to remind myself that, that those things exist. Um, you can get caught up watching the news every day and seeing only bad things and, and feel like the world is falling apart. Um, there are a lot of struggles out there, but the world is not going to fall apart. We're, we're going to be okay, and I try to remind myself of that. I also like to focus on things that I can control. There's so much in this world that I can't control. Um, so I'll focus on what I can control. And, and that might be something as simple as just the, the daily schedule within my house or the fact that I want to make sure that I get physical activity in every day. Those are things that I can control um, that help me stay mentally sharp and positive. I, I also like to focus on just taking each day at a time. You know, in this situation now, we're looking at a, at a month long situation here where we're going to be into some type of a rhythm um, is I, I don't want to worry about what April 23rd is going to be. I, I just want to worry about what April 1st is going to be today. And, and I'll work through April 1st and then I'll worry about April 2nd. Um, that helps me not get overwhelmed with with every day being kind of that groundhog day of, of repeating days. If I just focus on tomorrow. Now, that being said, um, this time of year for, for us in school administration, we spend typically uh, about as much time of the day talking about next year as we do talking about this year. And so uh, over the last few weeks, I've spent a lot of time planning out next year, working with principals about how many teachers will they have in their buildings next year and, and different plans for next year. And I've found that's helped me um, to, to think about next year and to think about uh, having a normal school day and having a normal school year next year, that's helped me regain my positivity and feel good about life. And so that's just something that you may think about doing within your own house as well. Now, what I also would encourage you to do is continue to practice your social distancing, but don't go into social isolation. Uh, social media, for as much as it has its negatives, it also has its positives in this situation. It's allowing us to continue to have that relationship with each other that we wouldn't have without it. FaceTime, old fashioned phone calls, uh, social media checking in with each other is really important. And whatever those groups of people are in your life that help you to cope in a normal situation, they can be reached through social media as well. That might be a church family. It might be um, your friends. It might be your coworkers that you miss seeing every day. It might be the other parents at the dance class or your, your child's uh, ball team, the other parents that typically you would spend two or three nights a week sitting next to them on the bench just talking about life. Find a way to reach out to them and just talk. Uh, check in to make sure others feel better. Oftentimes you, you'll find out that you'll feel better if you just spend time checking on other people. Uh, I know that reaching out to others makes a difference. It means a lot to me when somebody uh, takes the time to send an email or, or check in with me. Um, it's always appreciated and, and I'm sure you feel the same way. And so if you can give that to someone else, I, I think it will help you as well. Now, there's a lot of good news in this world, as we talked about, and I try to focus on the good news as well. Um, I want to share with you some good news from the school district, and there are tons that I could share today, but I'm going to share just a few highlights with you today. Um, one is we're donating a lot of PPE, the, the um, protective equipment for healthcare providers. We're making a donation to the Montgomery County Hospital District this week. Uh, we have actually gone into all of our buildings and looked for masks, looked for gloves, uh, we actually have health occupations classes that had gowns that we've been able to make available. And so Barbara Robertson, who you met a few weeks ago, our head nurse, has gone in and compiled all that. And we're going to make that donation so that first responders, hospital workers will have access to all that. And we're happy to make that donation. So that's good news. 
Um, along those same lines, um, our nurses are actually beginning to volunteer uh, within the county using their great skills. All our nurses are RNs and they're now um, going out and making a difference in the community in the hospital world. Also, Texas Torque is um, our world champion robotics team. Uh, they have actually uh, now have a small brigade of 3D printers that are up and running and they're printing new face shield masks, PPEs, that we are donating to local hospitals. So thank you to those students, those instructors that are making that happen. But we're really proud of the little things that we can do to make a difference. Uh, we also see a lot of grassroots efforts of people uh, raising money, people collecting food and distributing that uh, going on within our community. I actually had a family reach out to me last week and said so they just wanted to make a difference in, in the lives of people during this hard time. What could they do? And they decided to make a donation to actually pay off lunch balances uh, for a few of our schools so that families wouldn't have to worry about uh, repaying that when we do return. I thought that was so generous and it was just inspiring that a family would want to do that. Uh, we also see so many uh, great instructional activities now. Uh, one of the lasting and long-term benefits, the positives that will come out of the situation is we're going to be so much better at online instruction than we were before this started. Now, we would not have wished for it to go this way, certainly. Um, but moving forward, our teachers are going to be so so skilled and we're going to know how to use Canvas and we're going to know how to use all these different um, online apps that we didn't know before. And we see great things uh, out there that are happening. We also, through the pictures that you've been uploading uh, or, or sending us through Messenger, uh, and we've been uploading on our Facebook page, we see great family activities going on. Uh, we see moms and dads having an opportunity to spend time um, with their children. We see siblings um, actually getting along and doing lessons. I'm sure you're not sending us the pictures when they're not getting along, but um, but there are those moments that are that are very special moments, and we talk about that um, last last week when we had this uh, conversation about we're making memories today. And, and I see great memories being made around this very tragic uh, situation. Uh, and I encourage you to continue to have those positive memories being made. Uh, when we talked about our child nutrition, thank you to our great child nutrition team and everybody that's coming in to support them uh, in the work that's being done. We have now delivered over 150,000 meals. Uh, and so many of you over time have asked me, how can we volunteer? How can we be a part of this? And today uh, I'm going to give you a green light that I've not been able to give you yet. But here's your first green light for how you can be a part of this. Um, our donation site out at Caney Creek High School could use some volunteers. Uh, we have multiple sites out in, in our East County uh area and we need some more volunteers to help them. They're doing such a great job out there and serving so many families. So if you are interested in going out and being a volunteer uh, on our food delivery, you need to email the principal at Caney Creek High School. His name is Dr. Jeff Stickler. You can simply go to the Caney Creek High School website and click on the principal and you'll see his email. It will pop up. Once again, his name is Jeff Stickler. Email him, let him know that you are interested in volunteering, your family is interested in volunteering, and he will email you back and get you signed up into a time slot. Now, I want to tell you um, one of the things that we've done with our food distribution um, starting this week. Um, we feel like our food distribution is our the most important thing that we're doing right now. It is it is a life sustaining activity uh, within our community, and we and we want to make every effort we can to protect that activity. So we've actually gone into we screen everybody that comes in every day, those that are doing food prep or even those that are out on the line doing food delivery. We, we pre-screen every day, every day to make sure they don't have fever, to make sure no one is sick because we don't want to introduce uh, anyone that is sick into that process because we want to make sure that we can maintain that food delivery moving forward. Uh, and so we're, we're trying to be proactive with that. But if you'd like to volunteer, please reach out to Jeff Stickler. He is looking forward to your emails. We do still have that nurse's hotline that we mentioned last week, and we saw a graphic uh, that may have popped up here before we went live this evening, um, but that phone number is 936-709-7791. So if you would uh, like to get information, you can call our nurses. We'll pick up that call. Once again, this is not a line to call if you're sick or, or you need medical attention. It says if you want general information, they can share that information that's coming from the state and get that out to you. 
Uh, we're also working on those real life videos that we talked about last week. Uh, our first one that I've, that I've seen is our cooking video. We have a great cooking demonstration that's going to be coming. More of those will be coming over this next month. You're going to see more and more of of both real life, real world videos where we're teaching those lessons, but you're also going to see um, more and more good news because we feel like that's important right now. So you're going to see us sharing uh, more good news and more good news videos on our social media uh, because that's important and we, we need to get that out there. One other thing that you'll see us uh, sharing on social media, and I think uh, there, there was a little bit of this shared on uh, the scroll before we started today, um, is... TEA and the state of Texas's new guidance on um, our public health initiative. And they've asked us as school districts to be a part of this. And so you can see um, the motto is a part we stand together. And I know that we'd love to be uh, right next to each other at all the times, but right now standing together means we stay at least six feet apart. And so you're going to see us share this on our social media, but I'm going to share a little bit with you what it says. It takes all of us to save lives. If we work together, Few of our fr fewer of our friends and family will be affected by the coronavirus. Hospitals won't be overloaded and lives will be saved. So do your part to keep your fellow Texans safe. Practice social distancing. Keep your hands clean. Clean and disaffect objects and surfaces. Stay home when you're sick and don't spread germs. Uh, the symptoms of COVID-19 fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath. And they did also share a few facts here. 30% of the people that are affected with the virus will have no symptoms at all. So you may not feel like you have it, but you might be sharing it with people throughout the day. That's the importance of social distancing. Even if you don't feel bad, you still need to stay home. Of those that, that do get sick, about 56% of the people just have moderate symptoms and they may be able to work through that at home with self-care. But 10% of the population um, that is infected will need hospitalization with 4% of those needing ICU or more intense um, medical care. So it's important that we right now stand together by staying apart practice social distancing, stay home if you're able, if you must go out, when you do go to the grocery store, maintain that six feet separation, make sure that you're washing your hands often, uh, you're staying um, you know, a away from anybody that could potentially be, you know, you're sharing breathing areas or any of those things, practice your social distancing. The faster we do that, the faster we get back to normal, we can get back to having school. So I've, I've got some, uh, questions that have been coming through here. And so I'm going to work through those uh, as I can, as quickly as I can, and we'll go from there. Um, what about pre-K registration? So we did have a pre-K, uh, big pre-K registration fair that was scheduled um, to be done in person. That's now not going to occur, but we are working on an online option for that. Um, that, that registration process can be a little tricky. Uh, so we're looking for online, potentially a Facebook Live opportunity just like this, where we might walk people through or, or via video uh, that's pre recorded. But we will still have a pre K kinder registration fair. Uh, it will just be virtual now, but that will be coming. Um, how do families get Chromebooks? It's a great question. Uh, we've issued thousands and thousands of electronic devices. Any needs that you have, it may be te technological needs, it might be pencil and paper needs. Whatever needs you may have could be food needs. Whatever needs you have, contact your campus and they can help you through this. Um, your counselors are all on duty. Uh, once again, they're working remotely, but they will be there to help you. So if you will reach out directly to your counselor or your principal, uh, if they have a device available, they will they will get that to you. If they don't, they will find alternative ways for you to complete your assignments so that you can keep your learning going um, into the future. Um, how will students be ready for next year? That's the point of this continued online learning. We don't know for sure if we're going to be back in school on May 4th or not. It's just too early to tell. Um, but if we don't return to school at all and we we start back in August for next school year, uh, we know that we'll have to do some reteaching based on what's going on here in this fourth nine weeks. But the more time that's invested by our students now, that will help us with that reteaching that needs to go on in the fall. 
I have all the faith in the world and our teachers and our curriculum leaders that we can adjust what we need to adjust and that will help us be um, successful in the fall. So um, once again, I go back to do the best you can now and know that we will do any catch up and all catch up that we need to do in the fall to make sure students are successful. Um, are meals being distributed for anyone? Meals are being distributed for, for all children in the area and children no longer have to be present in the car. Those first few weeks, the guidance that we had um, from the state told us that kids had to be in the car. They don't have to be in the car anymore. So uh, you're able just to come through the line and you tell us you have three kids. Um, they, they may be at home uh, and that will allow us just to give you the meals for those kids. That's a really positive move. We're, we're thankful um, that the state and the federal government um, kind of relented on that rule uh, because it was to, it didn't make a lot of sense to have to pile a lot of kids in the car to bring them up. It's much safer if you can leave them at home and we can send the meal um, to you. Um, let's see, senior dues and prom ticket refunds, th those will all be handled by your campuses. That's not something that we do on the district level. Everybody's prom um, is different. Everybody charges different fees. And so I'm sure that your campuses will be working towards um, those refunds for you uh, moving forward. Uh, it's hard to reschedule proms. I had that question as well. Can, well. can we just reschedule the prom? That's a very difficult thing to do. The venues are already pre-booked. We actually book um, proms well over a year in advance. Like we already have the date set for next year's prom with these venues. So rescheduling a large event like that is just not feasible, uh, especially when we don't know at this point when it might be safe to have an event like that. So um, that that's part of the challenge. Um, let's see. Th there are uh, some folks out there saying, what else can we do? Um, you can volunteer at Caney Creek. Uh, I think food insecurity is going to be an issue in our county. It already is an issue in our county under normal circumstances. But as this uh, closure for not only us, but for the county and the state is prolonged and we have more families that have their incomes affected, I think food insecurity becomes even a larger issue. So any donation that you could make to the Montgomery County Food Bank, um, I can assure you through my work with them, and, and we have very close ties with the food bank, that your donations turn directly into food that stays in our community. Uh, so if you're looking for a place maybe to make a donation of money, I would encourage you to consider Montgomery County Food Bank. The same with your time. Um, if you go to their website, uh, I'm, I'm certain that they're also looking for volunteers. Uh, that's a place, and there are many other, um, I'm not just trying to pick the, the food bank, but there are many other entities out there that do great work in, in our community. It's part of what makes us uh, such a great community, but I can assure you the food bank uh, is one that we partner with often, and they will help get food uh, in to the families that are in need within our community. Um, okay. I think that we have pretty much covered, um, everything that needs to be done tonight. Uh, I know that w we couldn't answer all the questions. It's just, um, we, you know, we've had a lot of news today and we're working through it as quickly as we can, but we can promise you over the next few days that we will work on grading guidelines that will come out to you. Uh, we will continue our conversations about graduation and continue to look for options. Uh, but over these next few weeks, we're, we are going to settle into what is our new normal of the district operating under essential operations. So nobody on campus, but we will continue to deliver the great online instruction that we've done at home. You'll continue to do the best you can uh, with that. Any needs you have, please contact us, talk to us, uh, and we're going to help you in any and every way that we have available to us. As you see over the next few weeks, you're going to see more and more good news coming out on our social media. Uh, you're going to see more books being read uh, on our social media. Please enjoy those. Uh, we did upload the video last Thursday of me reading Be Happy. Hopefully you had a chance to enjoy that. If you haven't, please do. It's a wonderful book. And the end of that video has children reading the book, and it's um, as adorable as it could be. Um, but we'll, we'll also be sharing more of the public health news directly from the state of Texas at their request. Uh, it is great information as well. Um, I hope that today's message finds you and your family um, both healthy and happy. Um, we know we're all in this together. Um, it seems like a lot today, but we'll get through this day by day 
And before you know it, we're going to be talking about the end of this school year. We're going to be looking forward to summer and we're going to be talking about having a great 2020, 2021 school year. Please stay, stay, please stay safe. Please practice your social distancing. Stay home and be safe. Thank you.